Ocean-going petrol stations, or gas stations for my American friends, are the sort of ideas most people have when you ask where ships get their fuel. Logically, this makes sense as it's what we're all familiar with. You drive to a petrol station, fill your car up, then drive off. It works the same for small boats. In a marina, you'll find a dedicated fuel berth, which acts as a waterborne petrol station. Boats head across to the fuel berth, fill up, pay, and then sail away. So, what about ships? Clearly, they need a lot of fuel, and I'm not just talking about large quantity here. They need a lot of different types of fuel. Think of this typical cruise ship. When she refuels, she could take on heavy fuel oil for the main engines, marine diesel for the tenders and lifeboats, potentially even marine gas oil for gas turbines. Within those fuel categories, you may even have different purities, depending on where she's planning on operating. For example, most of the world permits ships to run on heavy fuel oil with a sulphur content of half a percent. This is a relatively recent reduction from the 3.5% that was permitted prior to 2020. Ships can either comply using fuel with half a percent sulphur, or they could run on fuel with a higher percentage and use scrubbers to extract it from their exhaust gases. Regardless of what they decide, it means they need one type of fuel for running over most of the world's oceans. There are, however, emission control areas that require an even lower sulphur content. Areas like the Baltic Sea, Northwest Europe and North America. Within these areas, the limit is 0.1% instead. What this means is that an ocean liner running between Southampton and New York might run on ultra-low sulphur fuel in the English Channel, change over to the worldwide half a percent low sulphur heavy fuel oil for the run across the Atlantic, because it's cheaper, then change back onto ultra-low sulphur ready to enter the American Ica on the other side of the Atlantic. Anyway, we're getting off topic a little now. The overarching theme here is that it's common for ships to take two types of fuel for their main engines. Maybe a third type for the smaller engines in lifeboats and tenders, and possibly even a fourth or fifth fuel for anything additional they run. But where do they get it from? Clearly it's not efficient to drive the ship to a petrol station to fill up. They'd just drain the entire station and have to go and visit multiple stations to fill up completely. Instead, what we do is we bring the petrol station to the ship using a specially designed product tanker. These tankers are commonly referred to as bunker barges. The name comes from the term bunkering, which just described the process of filling the coal bunkers on the old steamships. In their cargo tanks, they carry different grades of fuel so that they can deliver whatever the ship has ordered. They'll also carry a couple of substantial fenders so that they can safely dock against other vessels without damaging the paintwork. Often you'll find their engines and thrusters will be far more capable than those on other similar sized tankers just to help them manoeuvre alongside easily. They then connect their hoses to the ship's bunkering station and commence pumping fuel on board. It's not quite as simple as it is when you're filling up your car though. There's a whole set of procedures that both the ship and the barge's crew go through. For example, multiple samples will be taken and sealed with tamper resistant seals. One will be kept by the bunker barge, one by the ship, another will be sent to a laboratory for testing, and there will be a spare. Remember back to what I said about fuel emission limits? A ship is liable if they breach those limits. They'll have ordered a particular grade of fuel, but they're completely reliant on the bunker company to supply what's been ordered. Taking samples ensures that what has been ordered matches what has been delivered. As the fuel is pumped on board, it will be directed to specific fuel tanks chosen for a combination of stability and redundancy. You want the weight of the fuel balanced across the ship, and you also want to avoid adding new fuel into tanks already containing fuel that was purchased elsewhere. Ideally, you don't want to use new fuel until you've had the results back from testing the samples that you took. So, how much fuel does it take to fill a cruise ship? Well, quite a lot. I always used to work on the assumption that each engine burns about one ton of fuel per hour. Diesel electric ships will usually run on two or three DGs or diesel generators while cruising around. Of course, I say diesel generators, but they actually just run on whatever fuel you feed them. It could be diesel or it could be low sulfur fuel oil or something like that. If we assume three DGs gives you about 20 knots, you can see the ship is getting about 20 nautical miles for three tons of fuel. That's about 50 meters per gallon. For a three and a half thousand mile crossing from Southampton to New York, you're looking at, give or take, 600 tonnes of fuel. At typical bunker rates of roughly $500 per tonne, it's going to cost you around $300,000 for the fuel for that crossing. The higher the grade, of course, the higher the price. And you want to have plenty of spare fuel in case of emergencies. That gives you a typical cost to fill up one of these large ships of about half a million dollars. Realistically, you can expect it to only last around a week. 
Suddenly, when you look at it like that, you can see how it's financially worthwhile to bring the petrol station to the ship. The bigger the ship, the more economic sense it makes. On smaller ships, the same applies, but you might use a road tanker instead. If the ship takes around 30 tonnes of fuel, it's going to happily empty a road tanker. As soon as you're filling multiple vessels from a single tanker, though, it makes more sense to bring the vessel to the fuel instead. This is exactly what you find with small boats in marinas. It's just a matter of scale. You take small boats to the petrol station, but with ships, you bring the petrol station to the ship. And that brings us to the end of today's video. I'm not sure if you're aware or not, but I've recently launched a new community over on Patreon. If you would like early access to future videos, bonus content, or just to chat with like-minded enthusiasts, you should consider joining. I'll leave the link in the description below. Otherwise, we we'll post new content here on the channel on the last Friday of every month. Until next time, thank you for watching, and goodbye.